Well, thanks for the, the invitation. I'm uh, actually I'm here to talk about uh, engagement uh, and how engagement and the community growth could help uh, boost your organization. And uh, what I find out that I, it's really interesting that NGO is not really utilizing the fact that they are sitting on a gold mine. They have a big, big database, but they are really, or up until the day, they are really thinking about, uh, about silos and not really thinking about engagement as the core of the work and what they are actually using. So I'm not sure if there's any fundraisers in the room by any chance. No. Okay, so one, there's one fundraiser, yes. Okay, and uh, two, two fundraisers, that's, that's, that's cool, that's cool, yeah, well. And I'm wondering, is there, is there any organization or anyone who has regular meetings with fundraising teams, with comms teams, and thinking together that what kind of campaigns you can run together? One, there's one, okay. So there's, there's hope uh, and there's, uh, there's some movement. So uh, what I really want to talk about super briefly in 15 minutes is about, uh, is about lead generation and what you can learn from fundraising, how you can build your communities, uh, but also a bit about engagement and how you can, uh, or what actually these communities can help you to achieve it. Uh, before we go in, I'm sure that you're all aware about the definition of engagement. Uh, there was some talks about it, uh, so that's, uh, that's definitely, I don't really want to go too much in detail to it, but yeah, just to, to simplify it, you really want to make people to move uh, with you and from being uninvolved in a topic to get more and more involved. It's, it's often starting with a simple step and, you, and they are going further and further. The main challenge is here, or the challenge is what I see when working with different NGOs, is that uh, how to synchronize this, how, how you would like to involve those people who may be following you on social media, subscribe to your email, donating you some money, uh, your volunteer, and you are sending them different messages in the same time. And that's definitely an organizational challenge, which is, uh, which is hard to overcome. Uh, the super simple answer is always, talk to each other, that definitely helps. Surprisingly, it really helps. So uh, about a bit about engagement, I think this is familiar with the Greenpeace folks over that table, uh, and I'm not sure if uh, the mobilization lab is still exists or not, not anymore. Uh, but also it's more like a pyramid, it's not really a pyramid, it's more about a cycle, so it's an engagement cycle. But there are many, many, many points where you can actually uh, engage with your future supporters. And uh, yeah, fundraisers usually think that uh, donations are the highest level of engagement. However, I don't agree with that. Giving 5 euros, 10 euros, it's much easier than going to an event to put expose yourself uh, to actually uh, own a topic, to actually uh, try, to, try to lead and really get involved into the, to the topic. So, so you always really need to, needs to think about, okay, where these people are. It's all about segmentation. It's all about your communication. Uh, don't ask someone who has just followed you on social media to become a major donor, or don't ask legacies from a 20-year-old volunteer. So always uh, try to find the right balance and and no one understand where those people are at the moment and how engaged they are with your organization. The other thing which I, which I briefly want to talk about is that how you can get people. So it sounds good, but what if that uh, you don't have a big, uh, big name, so your brand, your NGO is not really familiar uh, to, to everyone. So you really have to, have to find the people, and finding the people is, uh, is, uh, is quite or relatively easy not super cheap, but relatively easy to find them via lead generation program and the two-step program. And the second step, it's really depending on your strategy. Usually it's about donor acquisition, and for me it is because I'm coming from fundraising, but it could be also to become your volunteer, it could be also to, 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 to engage with you in any level. So actually, you as community managers, I believe, can learn a lot uh, from fundraisers because they know how to find people and they know uh, how to actually actually move them, but you know the people who you would like to engage with, so your touch is definitely needed on those, uh, those campaigns. But it's also the other way around, so fundraisers usually forgot about engagement and they are happy. Oh, I've got this, uh, these people giving us some donations, 
And then, oh, I forgot to send any communication in the last uh, 12 months. And I'm surprised why those people are not with the organization anymore. So then you can also educate uh, or teach your, uh, your fundraisers that how to do engagement and communication with them. So the two step is basically starting with a non-financial ask, which could be either a petition, a survey, uh, any kind of gamification, uh, some sort of value exchange, uh, for example, downloading a really good uh, playbook of community practice. But whatever uh, it is important for you, not put it behind a paywall, but put it behind a lead generation wall. So there's many content. So if an NGO starts thinking about what I can offering uh, to my supporters, there's many things uh, that you can actually use it for lead generation. And then the donor conversion could be a second step, but it could be any other steps. Uh, the main, or let's say the, the secret is in between. So why you are, or when you are building the relationship with your supporters, then you can decide what will be your, uh, your focus. And uh, why is community growth is important for fundraisers, but also for every organization? Uh, because if you're focusing only on, uh, on donations and direct donations, then you are actually losing quite a lot of people. So if you generate leads, if you generate interest towards your organization, you can have the chance to get tens of thousands of new email addresses and phone numbers, what you can use later on in the journey. If you're focusing on only direct donation campaign, you only have that specific amount of people, uh, but not a bigger pool. I have a recent example. We have a client in, uh, in Australia called Destiny Rescue, and actually they just received, uh, I think it was like a 30,000 Australian dollar uh, gift uh, from one of their followers uh, who was actually coming from one of our campaign, and he was not engaged at all other than following the social media and their content, and one time uh, one content was really make uh, make that person to, to donate uh, that uh, higher sum of, uh, of a month. So, so that's also that you can build on that later on, you can utilize and then there's a value in the communities as, uh, as well. Because actually people don't want to give you money. People don't want to be your, your, uh, your volunteer. People really want to be part of your tribe, people who is believing what you're believing in. So they would like to be with people who is sharing the same values. And actually, uh, they also want to be recognized. So it's really not about you and your organization. It's about what people can do with you uh, to achieve your, uh, your cause. And, uh, and how you can get people, that's, for example, a two-step campaign or a lead generation campaign. And here are just some couple of examples how you can actually get uh, to those people. Because usually if you think, oh, I can't do petitions, so I can't really generate leads, I can't really get to people. Well, that's not exactly the case. So there are many other tactics, there are many other ideas how you can uh, actually reach uh, those people. And, uh, and why you want to reach it, as I mentioned before, because you, you really need uh, to build on the community. So it is good for, for fundraising, definitely. It is also good for your branding. It is also good for your campaigns. Uh, you can recruit volunteers. So if your organization is really based on uh, people participation or you have to do something with people uh, in your campaigns, you definitely need to grow your, uh, your communities. And uh, one thing, as there are not too many fundraisers around, so what I wanted to, to, to say that fundraisers usually, when they're thinking about online, they're thinking about, okay, so let's do that, grow the community, have a quick cash injection, I've got 20,000 euro to invest, I would like to get it out uh, within a year. But unfortunately, community building and community growth is not really uh, good for that or built for that, uh, especially if you are just starting. But it's on the contrary. So if you are relatively new in fundraising, but you have a big volunteer base, you can actually build on that. You can create a peer-to-peer -peer campaign where your former or volunteers could be your fundraisers who could actually uh, lead teams, uh, and those teams could reach way beyond your organization that you can definitely uh, build on. And uh, that's really not for a, for a rapid uh, cash income, but it's really a long-term game. 
Uh, however, it's also needed to constantly test. I think this is usually in every single presentation, but definitely uh, it's not really working in a way that you, you put something out, okay, it's working now, so I can leave it alone and it will uh, do its work. So you should constantly check your ideas, analyze it, test it, go back to the drawing table, and then uh, go out again after optimization. And it's definitely a, a regular cycle, which you would like to constantly thinking about and the best is if you can involve the other part of your organization if you are not working alone if you are not working uh, in a in a silo then you can create a diverse and strong acquisition program which could be benefit fundraising which could be benefit program which could be benefit your volunteer recruitment uh, and then you can create a portfolio of leads, uh, what you can build on and create segmented journeys. And then you can constantly feed the funnel uh, with people. And then you have people who you can actually, actually talk to and you are not talking about your, to yourself. So yeah, I think that was it, which I wanted to share in like 10 minutes. 15, thanks. <laughs>